I'd say it's impacted a lot of things. Um, last year for us, recruiting was very slow. Um, we went on a bit of a hiring pause. Um, you know, we weren't really focusing on, you know, external candidates. We were actually focusing on like Doctors on Demand, American Red Cross, and doing things that we called recruiting for good. So partnering with organizations that really needed support from recruiters. Um, that was something that I don't think I don't think any of our leadership would have saw happening, that we were in a place to like support the public and, and the, their needs from the medical field. Um, so that's one thing that's happened. Um, if anyone knows like LinkedIn, like we don't, we don't have as many offices as like maybe Facebook or Google. We're very like, cent like we have like our, you know, central offices. So we have Toronto, New York, Chicago, Detroit, um, Sunnyvale, Omaha, San Francisco, but typically we've hired to be in locations that our offices are. Um, and I think now with COVID teams are more flexible to, I don't care if you're in Seattle, Atlanta, um, I don't care if you are in West Virginia, we're open um, just to like good talent, right? It's not about you being based in a metro area or even having to relocate to an area which maybe you don't wanna be in. Um, I don't have a lot of candidates that are excited about moving to the Bay Area because of the cost of living, um, the, the, just the, the, you know, the style of everything, it's just not attractive. So I think like we've done a really good job of attracting candidates in different locations. I've made a few hires in like Boston and Seattle, um, Austin as well. So um, I think that's something I've truly liked because not only have we tapped into different markets but now we have opportunities to really close the gap in terms of diversity just by going into markets that we don't have an office but like Atlanta, like that's a huge market. Like there's so many companies on there that we can tap into that I think primarily we wouldn't have focused on that before. Um, but yeah, location's been pretty good. I'm glad that we're able to like hire in anywhere now. Well, as far as how COVID has changed the way that I recruit, I think technology has really come to play a huge role, right? Um, where here we are on Zoom with this particular call, but this is taking place more and more with how we interact with candidates for jobs. Um, how we find them has historically been, you know, LinkedIn's played a huge part in that over the last decade or so. Um, and now technology has gone from how we find candidates to how we interview um, and even have candidates often start with our companies. Um, even for people that live in the cities where our offices are located, a lot of them are still starting remote, right? And so I think that's been the biggest adjustment is shifting everything we do as um, TA, when I say TA, I mean talent acquisition professionals um, from you know, having papers to file and people to speak to in person and scheduling meeting rooms for our teams to meet with candidates that we found who are great to shifting all of that to happening online via Zoom and Teams and adjusting to that and kind of bringing our teams along with the process and teaching them how to do these things effectively via Zoom or having to retrain a lot of people on interviewing skills and etiquette on Zoom, you'd be surprised how many hiring managers have had to go through that sort of adjustment and we've had to step in and become educators around that um, while we're learning it ourselves, right? Because we haven't historically had to do it either as recruiters. And so um, that's been some of the biggest adjustment. And I agree uh, with Janelle when it comes to remote hiring, being able to hire from anywhere for any job as well. But uh, I'd say, you know, one of the biggest things is that, you know, we're not networking with people in person you know there's no career fairs where you're sitting you know where you're shaking somebody's hand or networking events or even you know like we used to have groups of students come to the office and you know visit or even having in-person interns um we've all switched to remote so kind of that remote environment of um of now everything's virtual we're talking through video um you know we're talking you know, through voice and, you know, you don't get that kind of like personal connection. So I think that that's the biggest thing. But as Kwame was saying, and, you know, as my other colleagues were saying, you know, we have turned into educators, educating them on how, you know, hiring managers on how to interview um, remotely and even onboarding people remotely and having remote interns. I think that was huge, um, hugely different. You know, we you know, we put a whole training together to teach the managers like, okay, you can't forget about your interns because they're remote. You, you want to engage them and still give them a really big learning experience. So yeah, I mean, all of that has been a huge adjustment. A couple of things have changed since COVID. One, 
I do a lot more interviewing in shorts and t-shirts than I've ever have. <laughs> um, but like a lot of us, things slowed down so much. I was like, okay, so what do I do to professionally grow and to tap into being able to help others? Um, like a lot of us here, we all like trying to help students and make a difference. And that's why we're here. So I started developing more relationships with heads of talent in the startup world and building my network and then passing candidates back and forth with these individuals. Um, that is one way that I've liked to help. Also, I liked working with students and talking to them while they're interviewing that this is different. Your interviewing is so different than what you've done in the past, but don't worry about the fact that there's people screaming in the background or there's dogs barking or there's a new norm. And I told it to my own daughter, she was going through this. If talking to doesn't understand that, that speaks probably to the company's values and culture. And if they're going to really push back that it's, you know, I've got five dogs. When one starts barking, they all start barking. If I'm interviewing and the dogs bark, that's okay. We laugh about it. It's okay. You don't have to have this perfect situation when you're interviewing because you're not going to. So that's what I developed over, you know, the last year or so when it's come to recruiting.